My husband is cheating on me with my best friend. I'm honestly not sure where to start so I guess I'll just start. My husband and I have been dating since I was 19 and he was 22. We've been married for 6 years now. We have two kids and I'm 6 months pregnant with our third. Two years ago I found out my dad has stage 3 colon cancer. My dad is my only parent as my mom passed away when I was 12. He's my favorite human and life without him doesn't seem as colorful. His laugh is contagious and he gives these big bear hugs that seem to make all of your broken pieces feel like they're perfectly in place again. Whenever I've had a hard day he doesn't poke and prod and just lets me vent and listens. About 5 months ago we discovered the treatments aren't working for him and in direct quote of the doctor he said months not years. Since then he's gotten progressively worse and now is losing memory. He looked at the dog he got for me on my 21st birthday and said wow that's a nice dog, where'd you get it? My husband has been my absolute rock. He has been there for me holding my hand and helping me through this. He's been so loving and attentive to both my kids and I. Don't get me wrong, I am a mother first always. I don't allow myself to wallow. My kids are still loved, cared for, played with, and I haven't let my load slack around the house. Once my dad got his updated prognosis my husband encouraged me to quit my job. About a month later we discovered we were pregnant again and I still hadn't let go of my job, I kept holding out for some reason. After finding out I was pregnant again he ensured me it was still okay to quit my job, that honestly it would save us a small fortune on daycare costs anyways. So I did, I quit my job. My best friend and I have been friends since diapers. Her family is like my family and vice versa. My mom and her mom grew up together. We've always been solid and right after my dad's appointment when we found out he had so little time left I drove straight to her house and she held me while I cried for hours. If there are soulmates in friend form, she was mine. Thick as thieves is what my mom used to say. This morning as I was up with my three-year-old, he's sick, my husband's work alarm was going off. He has a few he sets so I turned that one off and gently woke him up. He said he was up late working so he took the morning off, rolled over and went back to sleep. As I went to turn off the remainder of his alarms I saw a text from my friend on his lock screen that said I'm assuming since there hasn't been an angry pregnant lady on my doorstep you haven't told her about us yet? Time froze in that moment. I took his phone and walked away and just read their conversations. Four months this man has been effing me best friend. Four months these people have been lying to my face. And I know what you're going to say, you should have seen the warning signs, but I've been clutching this phone in my hand for two hours and nothing. He has been so loving and attentive to me, but he always has been, so kind and gentle. There has been no late night work nights except for once in a blue moon, there has been no lingering touches between them or even glances. They act as they have since the day I first introduced them. How sick is it that she calls him her brother but she screws him? I know so many people get a moment of clarity in situations like this but I have none. Aside from being sad about my dad, I haven't changed. I'm still a loving wife and mother. I still doted on him and my children. I talk to him about how he is doing and how was his day every freaking day. I haven't allowed the ground to swallow me whole. I know what I have to do now, but I just don't want to. I'm about to lose my family and my support system in one blow. I'll confront him tomorrow? Today? Today I just need this last 24 hours of peace. As for her, I won't give her the satisfaction of a response. I don't care why she did it. She did it and it's done. I was always the friend who cleaned up her messes. After today I will cut her out of my life like she never mattered at all. This has to be the hardest storm I'll ever weather. But damn it I know it'll sail through it. If not for me, for my children. Update to my husband is cheating on me with my best friend. Hello everyone, I'm here with the much awaited update. For my typing sake I'm going to give everyone, fake, name so for context. Mill and Phil, Ruth and Joe. Ex-BFF parents, Angie and Bob. Ex-BFF Jess. Soon to be ex, Tyler. Ex-BFF's brother. Jake. And I'll just refer to my dad as dad. I have a few things I want to get through so I'll just summarize as best as I can and if you have any questions I'll answer in the comments. To get this out of the way because to me it feels important. Yesterday I scheduled a same day appointment with my abgen and got tested for just about every STD slash STI out there. I got the results for most back and they were all negative. There's a few that take up to two weeks to get the results back for, so I'll be waiting on those. When I met with my lawyer I brought everything on my end financially wise including the wills from both my dad and my mom and I managed to get my hands on his financial documents. He stores his in his office in a locked box. I also brought over everything we had set up financially for my children. While I'm not totally sure if it's everything I am pretty confident I got most of it. My lawyer was happy I managed to get my hands on that much. Ruth even handed over her will to me from both her and Bob to ensure I was taken care of in the divorce. My lawyer understands I'm wanting a divorce immediately, however she wants to make sure she is thorough and isn't missing any key info. So hopefully I'll have actual divorce papers to give him in about 30 days. I'm not, rushing her though, I'm letting the professional do her job. Now for the sit down. I asked Angie and Ruth to describe everything in detail on what happened. Angie, the revenge seeker that she is, forced them to sit through a slideshow she put together of all of the texts. I know a lot of you were concerned about one of them telling them sooner than later but they were so secretive they didn't even tell their significant others about what was happening. Once the slideshow ended Tyler tried lunging for Jess and Joe actually had to force him to sit down. 
Tyler was shouting profanities at Jess and telling her she will regret this. Jess started crying and begging her parents for forgiveness. Bob looked his daughter in the eye and told her he will never forgive her for this. Blood or not she is no daughter of his. He didn't raise his daughter to be this person. Jess was always a daddy's girl so I think that cut her pretty deep. Jess is in the middle of a divorce herself and her parents were giving her money for her lawyer and they told her she is cut off from them both financially and physically. Tyler's dad was irate. According to Ruth he looked like he was holding back on throttling him. From there Tyler went straight home. I know because we have a ring doorbell camera along with a few cameras in the house for our kids to keep an eye on them when we aren't right next to them. Tyler came home and saw that most of mine and the kids stuff was gone and he lost it. Started yelling and throwing things. The house is now trashed with a few holes in the walls for decoration. When he didn't find us there he went to my dad's. While I did spend most of the day he was at work packing and moving things into my dad's house. We were already at his cabin. Tyler took a baseball bat to my dad's door trying, and failing, to break it down. My dad's neighbor actually called the cops on him and he was arrested. His parents refused to bail him out. I had an appointment, with my therapist today, I've had one for a year now since I was struggling with my dad, and it felt good to just cry it out and let everything out about how I was feeling. It was very helpful and she gave me a few tools to work through my emotions with this one. I felt very grounded and empowered leaving my session today. I'm also planning on setting up my children with a therapist when we get back from the cabin to figure out the best way to deal with telling them. I know people said I shouldn't, but I will be telling them, just in an age-appropriate way. I don't want there to be secrets and lies between us. I've always been as open and honest as I can with them. Again in the most kid-appropriate way. Just because they're small humans, they're still humans and still deserve the truth. I had a handful of comments telling me I should stay and every man cheats. I should work things out because most of our marriage was good. I refuse to believe all men cheat. My parents were married for 20 years and after my mom passed my dad never moved on. I watched my dad love my mom for 12 of those years and cherish her. I will not accept anything less than that kind of love. He never cheated nor did she. While I'm not sure when I'll be ready to move on. Falling in love is the absolute last thing on my mind at the moment. I refuse to let Tyler win and destroy love for me completely. I will move on from this. Jess started blowing up my phone demanding I fix this situation and immediately blaming me. My lawyer told me to not block texts just in case they spill out an additional info I was missing. She was playing the poor me card very hard. The thing is though, I never influenced Angie and Bob to cut contact with their daughter. They made that choice on their own. She actually started blaming me for stealing the love of her life. I introduced them when Tyler and I started dating so not sure where that came from. And that Tyler is only with me for the kids. Honestly, I knew she was just trying to hurt me at that point. I didn't give her the satisfaction of responding though. Between her and Tyler I have about 200 missed calls. Tyler went from begging and pleading me to forgive him. Like I said I didn't have divorce papers to hand him so he's stuck in this unknown gray area. I also asked Angie and Ruth to not say anything about the divorce to him yet. Purely just for my satisfaction honestly. I know it's slightly petty but keeping him in that gray area of not knowing is my small revenge to him. To threatening to call the cops on me for kidnapping. Telling me Jess wasn't the only one, bingo. Just what I was looking for. To telling me I'm a stuck up bitch to threatening me. To back to begging me for forgiveness. Honestly it was just a whiplash reading those texts. I'd be lying and saying if those texts didn't hurt me and terrify me all at once, but I refuse to let them break me. As for both of them together, I don't think he is going to stay with her. I think he blames her for blowing up our marriage honestly. Who knows though, they deserve each other. I was initially okay to do a 50-50 split with Tyler for custody, but after his reaction I don't feel comfortable with that, so I'll likely be going for full custody. Jake has about 30 days of leave he's saved up and he's going to be using them to help the kids and I get settled at my dad's house and honestly to be there in case Tyler tries showing up going crazy again. He's been such a big help to the kids and I lately and I'm forever in his debt for this. Last night after the kids went to bed he hooked up his Xbox and we played a game called Diablo 4 together to help me take my mind off of things. It was fun. However, he did sort of confess that he's always had feelings for me somewhere in the midst of things, but also told me to not say or do anything back. He understands a relationship or anything like that isn't on my mind and won't be for a while, he isn't wrong, but just that he's felt that way since we were teenagers and just wanted to get it off his chest. Thank you again. Seriously, your comments, your support, your messages, all of it has been one giant breath of fresh air. Just knowing I have a whole online community willing to go to bat for me has kept me treading water these last couple days. Your comments have popped in my head when I felt like just giving up on leaving him because it's so hard and gave me so many great points and helpful advice. I know I deserve more and I can't accept his actions. And to the people who commented relating to my situation, my heart goes out to you all. This pain is awful and I hate that so many of you can relate, but your stories have resonated deep within me. You all keep commending me for my strength and my personal favorite is telling me how proud of me you are. Every time I see those words I start to tear up, I'm blaming the pregnancy hormones, but your words have helped put me at ease so that way I could do what I knew I needed to do. So I'll leave this here for now. If anything of importance happens when I go back home I'll update further. Thank you all, and I hope you have a wonderful evening. Update one month later. Hey everyone. I'm still getting daily messages and comments for an update, so here is what could possibly be my final one. 
My dad passed away about a week after my last update. I knew it was coming, but it still feels like a gut punch. Thank you for everyone who kept him in your thoughts. Truly. My marriage has officially ended. Once Tyler, I believe that's the fake name I assigned to him please don't call me out if it's not. It's been a while, discovered just how serious I was about leaving him he became compliant and was willing to give me everything I asked for in the divorce. So my lawyer opted for a dissolution versus divorce. The process is a lot quicker and went smoothly. As of, right now I have full custody while he works out his anger management and whatnot with therapy. I'm not sure if I'll ever trust him again with the kids, but I'm also in therapy as well or my kids. I'm not making any decisions at all right now when it comes to that. He gets supervised visits at a facility where there is an army of staff and security and someone is there at all times. That's once a week, and he does get video calls twice a week. The kids are adjusting pretty well. There are days when I think it affects them more, but they've suffered some big losses so it's to be expected. I did decide to give the baby my dad's first name though. It just felt right. But baby is doing so very well and is thriving despite the amount of stress I've had going on. I'm managing as best as I can with everything going on. I miss my dad like crazy and I'm still trying to figure out how to exist in a world where he doesn't. The grief still is so very heavy. I'm still mourning my marriage as well. I don't regret leaving him, but it still hurts me deeply. However, I'm picking up the pieces and making my life whole without him. My mill, well ex mill now I guess. I don't know still feels weird, and Angie helped me out so much. They've really allowed me to lean on them in these moments. Whether it be taking the kids for a little while or cooking dinner for us when I don't have the energy. I truly am so lucky to have them. And finally to what you all have been waiting to hear about, Jake. Jake is now back in California. He tried extending his leave but the military said no. It was truly wonderful having him there and helping me. In the first few days after my dad's passing he picked up so much slack for me that I will truly never be able to repay him for it. He is so patient and kind. That being said, nothing has happened between us. Though he did hold me while I broke down after the kids went to bed quite a few times. But that's the extent of it. No, kissing or anything like that. He does call me and text me multiple times a day. Right now I just don't have any room in my life for romance. I have so much grief and the weight of being a single mom has been heavy. He hasn't pushed me on it either. He let me know that he meant every word he said and that he's willing to just be my friend until I decide I want more, if I ever decide I want more with him. I wish I could be the girl that jumps in with both feet, but the betrayal from my ex is still fresh and I'm worried I would burn anything out before it started. So I asked for friends and time to process everything else in my life before I even consider processing a new relationship. He happily agreed. Oh and Tyler and Jess are not a couple. Most of you were right, he left her high and dry. Though I don't wish misery on anyone. I'd be lying if I didn't say I get the smallest amount of satisfaction that her life went up in smoke. She's been blacklisted from her family. And I know a lot of you said it's weird that her parents did that, but if you guys knew just how deep my bond went with that family it wouldn't seem weird at all. Angie is like my surrogate mom. She gave me the safe sex talk, the period talk, she listened to me cry about the boys who broke my heart, she held my hand while I delivered my kids, when she talks about me she calls me her daughter. She knew my mom for practically her whole life. She held my mom's hand when she delivered me and if anything had happened to both of my parents, she is who I would have gone to live with, my parents had that in their will. So with all of that being said, please just be kind to me in the comments. I put this off for a few days because of how hostile some people were and the prospect of being called a liar doesn't sound too appealing at the moment. Again, I can't, thank you for the amount of light and love I've received from you. I promise I read every comment and message, I just, haven't had the capacity to respond. You have really helped brighten my days with all of your words of encouragement. I appreciate you all. I am so lucky to have an army of internet friends, you guys are the best less than three. This is it for now, I probably won't post anything else for a while. I'm still trying to find my footing and I'm trying to get settled in a new routine before I bring a brand new baby in the world. I may come back to this but I may not. Though I do promise I'll update if anything happens with Jake and I lol. I know so many of you became invested. P.S. Please excuse any typos, pregnancy insomnia is kicking my ass right now. Answers to a few common questions and a small update less than three. Hey everyone, I can't believe it's been almost two months since I last updated you all. I've missed chatting but life has been keeping me very busy. Does Tyler's parents still talk to him? No. My mill cut him off almost instantly and went no contact. Phil is very low contact and only speaking with him when he takes the kids to their supervised visits to see him. Did Tyler cheat on you with more than just Jess? To my knowledge there was only one other girl, which if you click on my comments and scroll a little you'll see me briefly explain the situation. If there are any more than that it's not to my knowledge and I honestly think I'd prefer to not know. Aren't you concerned about Jake and Jess being in contact with one another still? They are siblings after all. Jake and Jess never had a good relationship. They were very very low contact before any of this came out. They never got along as kids and the relationship never changed as they got older. Looking back on it, it was a major red flag how she treated him. They only ever spoke as adults as family functions and even that was brief and only surface level conversations. What all are you telling your children? You should let them process how they need. 2. The only one who is old enough to semi-understand what's happening is my oldest. 
I sat both of them down and simply said mommy and daddy aren't together anymore. Daddy did some things that I wasn't okay with, that means daddy won't live with us anymore, but you can still see him, spend time with him, and love him with all of your heart. It might be a little confusing and that's okay, but it's important to know that we both love you guys so much and that will never change. Then asked if they wanted to talk about it at all or if they had any questions about the situation. My oldest had a few and I answered in an honest but age appropriate and gentle manner. They are still in therapy. They come to me if they want to talk about it, but if not I don't push it on them. My goal in this has never been to weaponize and poison the kids against him and it's something I will never do. He's their dad and I refuse to traumatize them any more than they have been. Do you have a Venmo, registry, PO, box, etc. I am warmed by your thoughtfulness and kindness. However, I cannot accept any of it. You are truly beautiful humans for being so willing to help me. However, I ask that you give those donations to your local shelters. I have a rather large inheritance and an amazing support system. But if I wasn't so fortunate I could have very well been one of the girls who had to take refuge at a shelter. I've been making donations to shelters near me and my kids and I have been volunteering at a few. On to the update. So if you read any of my previous comments you know that baby boy is here less than three he's honestly been the calmest newborn that I've ever managed. Hardly cries, is very content and happy all the time. He's been reaching all of his milestone markers, even hitting the ones that aren't on the preemie scale. It's been such a relief and a blessing. The older two completely adore him and are of course eating up the extra attention they get from their grandparents. Yes Angie and her husband are called grandma and grandpa as well when I went into labor I had told Tyler that I was in labor, but I didn't want him at the hospital. It is his kid, so I was being courteous. He blew up on me for taking away his right to see his child be brought into the world. I simply turned off my phone to relax and de-stress. He actually showed up at the hospital and had to be escorted off the property by security. Not for being violent or anything. He just wouldn't leave after I had told the nurses. I delivered at the hospital I work at. I'm an RN. I didn't want him around. After that he hasn't been to a single visit to see the kids. I initially sent him pictures of the baby and updates but he never responded and eventually blocked my number. After roughly a month I asked my Phil to reach out to him since no one had heard from him. My Phil actually showed up at Tyler's house to do a well check since I was concerned something was wrong. Even though I don't love him anymore there is a piece of me that will always care for him as the father of my children. Turns out he has a new girlfriend and just isn't interested in being a dad anymore. He actually even denied paternity even though he's the only person I've ever been with physically. The kids are honestly and surprisingly okay with him not really being around. No, I didn't feel it necessary to tell them the harsh things he said. Jake has been completely amazing. He had my favorite food delivered to me at the hospital post-birth. FaceTiming me and texting me regularly. Chatting it up with the kids. Hasn't been pushy on me at all. Has let me set the pace completely. Hasn't crossed any of my boundaries in the slightest. He actually booked me a surprise postnatal massage and arranged all of it. Including child care. It was the most relaxed I've felt in months. He sends little gifts and food to the house occasionally especially on my hard days. Jake has truly been a breath of fresh air. He comes home in just over three months and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited. As for me, I've still been regularly attending therapy. It's really helped me cope and just in general become a better person and mother. I'm still devastated by my dad's passing and grief really loves to put a chokehold on me when I least expect it. Sometimes I just go sit in his office where it smells the most like him and cry. I was very blessed to have such a loving and amazing dad. Angie and Mill have truly been angels on earth. I cannot express how beyond lucky I am to have this amazing support system. Even Phil slash Angie's husband have been insanely supportive and kind. I would be lost without their unconditional love and support. As crazy as it sounds, I'm honestly unbothered by the divorce and Tyler not being around anymore. I think I'm more relieved than anything. My heart aches for my children. But I'd, I don't think I truly realized how long I was holding my breath and walking on eggshells in that marriage until I was in a space where I didn't have to anymore. My therapist and I really dug deep and took off the rose-colored glasses. In a weird yet awful way. I'm almost thankful I caught him cheating. I think that's why I was so calm and methodical during the leaving in phase. I go back to work next week. I think I'm ready to find my new normal and get back into a routine. While my heart aches my dad isn't around to see it. I'm ready to unlock this next chapter of my life. Cheers to the chapter of healing, self-love, new beginnings, and finding peace within the chaos. Thank you for going through this journey with me, supporting me, sharing your stories with me, and just being here. Love you all internet friends, I hope you have an amazing day. I'll update again when I can. Less than three.